Kansa no wako magantik, tamskat dinawa gakyao, na toki tope na tsigas and maskek si oche. Uh, my name is Sacred Rider, Chief Billy Morin from the Enoch Cree Nation, and I am the Vice Chair of the Hydrogen Hub in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Well, hi, Chief Morin. Thank you so much for taking the time to uh, speak with us today and to speak to the TFU community. Um, I want to start with uh, speaking about or exploring how you would characterize the potential uh, that hydrogen represents for Canada's future economy. Yeah, great question, Tim. Uh, thanks for the question and thanks for the, uh, the opportunity today. Well, the, the potential is quite simply this. Um, 2050 uh, net zero for Canada is, is a real thing. And I think we have to get there tangibly and practically. And uh, hydrogen um, will be a pillar of a net zero uh, carbon economy in Canada. Uh, I think it's, it, it goes without saying that this is, uh, Alberta in particular, um, probably the strongest opportunity economically to uh, start to transition um, to a more uh, net zero economy. Uh, again, noting that we can transition with the expertise, the experience, um, the know-how, and quite frankly, the identity of Edmonton and Alberta in oil and gas into something such as hydrogen. So you are the vice chair of the Edmonton Region Hydrogen Hub, which was recently created. Um, I want to ask two questions about that. First of all, what is a hydrogen hub? How would you define that? And who are the parties involved in Edmonton's uh, regional hydrogen hub? So the hub is, is quite simply in Edmonton at this point, uh, a combination of local municipal leaders, uh, government leaders, um, local uh, private industry, um, local arms like organizations such as the, uh, the Accelerator, um, local business groups such as the Sturgeon County um, Heartland Association, so private sector, government, and uh, it takes regionally all these players um, to really, again, create that, that zone, create that, uh, that environment to excel hydrogen into actual development instead of just talking about it. And the final ingredient there, I would say, is the First Nations themselves. So, you know, here in Edmonton, Alberta and Canada, um, we're seeing reconciliation economically and reconciliation action, of, including First Nations. So uh, we're proud to be at the table in, in the hydrogen hub. And I'm, I'm extremely fortunate to, to be the vice chair. Why was Edmonton and the region uh, chosen for Canada's first hydrogen hub? And what do you see as the region's unique advantages for this, especially in terms of investors who are looking to, uh, to, to benefit from the potential that hydrogen represents for the future economy? I guess Edmonton's advantage is this. And again, this is oil and gas country. We have an abundant amount of, uh, amount of gas and gas infrastructure here. And uh, we're going we're gonna to have blue hydrogen. We have all the variables, the, the capital, um, the infrastructure, again, the gas supply, um, we have the expertise in refining and extraction of gas. And uh, that's what's really driving this process. It's, it's economically viable here with the same principles and the foundation that we have. So that's what makes Edmonton different and, uh, and going to be the catalyst in Canada. For, for investors foreign, for, uh, for foreign investors on how they're going to come into the region and what makes them feel safe is, again, um, the hub itself is, is not just you know, the city by itself. It's not just one minister by themselves. It's not just one kind of pie in the sky company. It's local regional players at all levels who want to facilitate this growth. And I'm not sure you have that coordination in other regions across Canada. This is the most coordinated one. Uh, this is the one that makes the most economic sense. And so this is the one that's already translated into something like air products investing in $1 billion into the local region. So again, uh, all the, uh, the factors and the leaders are moving in the same direction for foreign investment. You mentioned that First Nations have to have a seat at the table, and they do, and you being the vice chair. Um, how do you think First Nations and Indigenous stakeholders have to be engaged in development of hydrogen, uh, not only in Edmonton, but across Canada? And how well is Edmonton doing this? Can you mention any instances of uh, lessons learned, lesson learned or best practices? Yeah, for First Nations engagement, you know, I look to, um, we look to history. And here in Canada, again, um, you know, resource extraction um, for First Nations has always been paternalistic. The Indian Act, which legislates uh, First Nations business and First Nations interaction, even just within the economy, has held First Nations back for uh, the better part of a century now, uh, especially when it comes to oil and gas. So, you know, there's so many lessons to be learned because that legacy 
um, we're seeing we're seeing great wins, um, but we're also seeing wins too much defined in court and and too much defined in, in adversarial, too much defined in conflict. Um, but there's there's lessons to be learned again because again, and early on in the oil and gas development process, uh, you know, 50, 60 years ago when my great grandfather was chief, uh, it was it was the minister of Indigenous relations controlling that, right from the transaction right to the uh, sharing of wealth and building the nation from those those resources. And now early on in the development of a new kind of industry, building off of uh, industries that have already been here, First Nations are right there, right at the start, right at the start, maybe in the regulatory conversation, right at the start in the production conversation, right at the start in the equity, equity conversation. So again, um, you know, to us, uh, hydrogen represents that transition um, and that opportunity for lessons learned that were uh, First Nations were wrong in, in the past when it came to oil and gas development. So uh, kind of a clean slate and First Nations are ready to participate at this time. It's not just about the bottom line. It's you got to come into the nations and get to know the people. You got to come in uh, and get to know, as juvenile as this sounds, uh, Billy's grandma. You got to participate in a ceremony. You got to share a meal with us. And again, that might sound a little juvenile, but uh, what you can think of First Nations as is, is large family businesses. So a community such as mine is a 2,632 person family business. And the way family businesses um, do business is you got to come and meet us. Uh, we're very welcoming, by the way. So we love to share um, uh, our story. We love to share our culture and uh, we're very welcoming. Oh, I love the idea of that. And uh... I hope you can hook up our next interview with Billy's grandma because uh, we'd love to expose her <laughs> to the world as well. It's kind of true because, uh, again, large family business is Billy's grandma was on leadership before. Billy's grandma um, uh, oversees business as a leader 20 years ago. So, again, she's the elder in the room who I have to run things by. So she's not just my grandma. She's also a senior advisor to the nation. I want to know um, in terms of economic growth in terms of uh, all the other opportunities that it might represent. Uh, how do you define or characterize the potential for hydrogen uh, for Indigenous populations, uh, Indigenous First Nations, not only necessarily uh, for Enoch in Edmonton or in Alberta, but across the board, across Canada? Well, for us, um what potential does hydrogen production rep represent for Indigenous nations? It represents to us across Canada, not just Enoch, the opportunity to live up to our reputation. So, you know, Indigenous people are seen as the stewards of the land. We're here to ultimately protect the land. That's the teachings historically our elders um, passed down to us as our responsibility to do right by Mother Earth, to also find a balance in making uh, money, creating business, but doing it in a sustainable way that honors Mother Earth and our traditional teachings. That's what hydrogen to me represents in this local regional economy in the hub. You mentioned throughout the interview all these different groups that are involved in the hub that have to be involved in the hub to ensure its success. Uh, government, uh, business, both local and foreign, and obviously First Nations such as yourself. Um, how cooperative are all these partners in the Edmonton Region Hydrogen Hub? Um, and from a foreign investor's perspective, how welcoming do you see that business ecosystem as being? Well, right now, I would say local partners are, 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 are very much on the same page. So, you know, again, we're fortunate enough as First Nations to sit at that table with uh, multiple other uh, mayors and, and local regional representatives. And, uh, you, you know, when boots hit the ground on, on something like um, air products investment into uh, a production facility on the east side of Edmonton, um, they can count on the local mayor. They can count on the local First Nations. They can count on the local industry um, throughout the production uh, value chain and, and the systematic chain to, to be there for support. I think, again, if you're a foreign investor, um, you know, come and see us, come and talk to us. And, you know, I think the First Nations themselves, as opposed to maybe the municipalities or even the private sector, have a different arm's length um, access to the government, a different lobbying, a different uh, mechanism to go into government and say like, because um, again, we categorize ourselves as nations. So ultimately, we're here to share, um, but First Nations themselves can create legislation, they can create regulatory regimes, uh, we would never do it at the cost of quality. But I think we represent an arm that has never been thought of by private sector industry, and quite frankly, foreign investment, 
to create over get over these little humps and these little regulations and these little things that government sometimes do to get in the way of, of new innovations and new sectors so um as a foreign investor, some of the first people I want to talk to, actually, if I was them, would be the First Nations to create that environment for kind of fast, the speed of business, innovation, getting it from just an idea over uh, getting it just from research to commercialization. I think First Nations represent kind of a new arm to get it there sooner. <laughs>